listening to his word. Take it in, assimilate, accept, believe it. So that this word will work effectively and effectually in your heart and life. You need to have the assurance of salvation, being born again. Except a person is born again, all the study of the word will profit him nothing. Somebody might have the knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom without the new birth without salvation, without being born again. All that knowledge will avail nothing. So pray that the Lord will grant you assurance of salvation through this engrafted word. Being born again, born anew, but this engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. And pray that God will help you in all trials, temptations, persecutions, and pressures. Whatever is coming from the world, anywhere in the world against your Christian life that God will help you to stand stand firm courageous living by the word of God so that the threats of persecutors the troubles that come from those who want to draw you back from the way of life, that those things will not have any power, any impact in your life. I pray that God will help you to give priority to your Christian life. So the only thing that matters to you will be your relationship with God, your righteousness in Christ. And when persecutors arise, wanting to derail you, distract you, destroy you, pray that God will help you to know the reason for their plot, the secrets of their plan, that God will so help you to stand by His grace that you'll not give up your confidence in the Lord. Pray that today the Holy Spirit will take this word that we'll read and study and learn. And turn it into spiritual energy, spiritual power, spiritual strength. So that during the week, whatever is happening in life, you'll be able to stand on the rock of ages, immovable, steadfast, in obedience to the word of the Lord, 
all the days of your life. It's able to keep you from falling, able to keep you holy, pure, and righteous, sanctified. Self will destroy the very roots of sin taken away. That Adamic nature, depravity, always wanting to drag you down, bring you down. The power of the cross of Christ is able to crush and destroy that. And God is able to give you spiritual inward stamina and strength that you will be able to take your stand and live a victorious, triumphant life. Pray that when the time of temptation trial comes, you'll not be weak, you'll not be fearful, you'll not be timid, you'll be able to stand by the side of Daniel and you'll dare to be a Daniel. Firmly, courageously, wholeheartedly standing, standing and defending this faith once delivered unto the saints. Pray that the study of the word will benefit you, will change you and transform you, move you on from strength to strength, from grace to grace, from one level of commitment to a higher level of commitment. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. I greet God in heaven, how we thank you and worship you and adore you. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege you give us every week like this to come together. And what a glorious privilege it is. Lord, we pray the heart to keep, to appreciate such a privilege. Grant to every one of us in Jesus' name. That this glorious opportunity you've given us will never lose it in Jesus' name. This is that one thing that is needful. So that a Christian lives will be based upon the solid rock. And so that when the storms of life will come, trials will come, temptations will come. We'll be able to stand immovable in Jesus' name. Once again, as we come to the world tonight, we're praying. You grant us illumination, yeah. understanding, yeah. light in the Holy Spirit, that the Spirit of truth will make the truth of the Word very clear and plain to every one of us in Jesus' name. Yeah. Faith comes by hearing, power comes by hearing, and strength comes by hearing, stability comes by, by hearing. Therefore, Lord, we pray that as we hear the word of God tonight, faith will come into us. Strength will come into us. Courage will come into us. Power will come into us. 
and the stability, the steadfastness to follow through the word of God, you grant to everyone in Jesus' name. We bless your name because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. Let's all be seated. I welcome everyone to the Bible study tonight. And I pray that the Bible study will enrich your heart and your soul in Jesus' name. We're looking at Daniel chapter 6. We've been in Daniel for a long time now. More than half a year. We've been in Daniel. And it's quite a lot. The Lord has been teaching us. And as we come tonight to the world, I pray that the great teacher from heaven, the Holy Spirit, will teach every one of us in Jesus' name. We're coming to Daniel chapter 6. And I'm reading from verse 10. Daniel chapter 6, verse 10. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his windows being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God and as he did a four time. And then we read in verse 11, Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. Then they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree. Hast thou not signed a decree that every man, no matter who that man is, how favored, how high, how fortunate, how privileged, whether an officer in the kingdom or somebody the king loves, anyone, have you not signed a decree that every man that shall ask a petition of any god or man within thirty days, except of thee, save of thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. The king answered and said, If it is true, according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which alters not, notice that, according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which alters not. Then answered they and said before the king that Daniel, that Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, regardeth not thee, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but maketh his petition, how many times? Three times a day. Then the king, when he heard these words, was so displeased with himself, and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. Then this man assembled unto the king, and said unto the king, No, O king, that the law of the Medes and the Persians is that no decree nor statute which the king establishes may be changed. Then the king commanded, and he brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. And his stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet, and with the signet of, the, of his lords, that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. Neither were instruments of music brought before him, and his sleep went from him. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste unto the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually, able to deliver thee from the lions? Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God has sent his angel, and has shut the lion's mouth, that 
they have not hurt me for as much as before him. Innocency was found in me. And also before thee, O king, I have done no hurt. Then was the king exceeding glad for him. And commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den. And no manner of hurt was found upon him. Everybody read the rest of us today because say that again. What a wonderful thing to believe in the Lord because he believed in his God. That's what came upon Daniel. And although you may not be thrown to the lion's den like they did for Daniel, yet every believer will experience persecution, trial, temptations, and troubles. In fact, the Bible tells us many are the afflictions of the righteous, meaning many are the persecutions of the righteous. Many are the trials of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Many are those trials, troubles, temptations, persecutions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver every one of us out of them all in Jesus' name. Daniel's persecutors were the creation of envy and jealousy and hatred. Because the king was endeavoring, he was planning that he'll promote Daniel above all those three, all those two presidents and all the princes and the governors. And because of that jealousy rose up in their hearts. And whenever a man is blessed and promoted by the Lord to a place of honor and greater usefulness, envious and jealous men quickly rise up to pull him down. And because this was the intention of the king, Concerning Daniel, that's why they rose up and then they had this plot or plan that Daniel will be destroyed. It seems there is always a price to pay for promotion and greater usefulness. Always a price to pay. When God has favor upon you, you remember Joseph, there was a price to pay when God showed him that dream. Do you remember Job? There was a price to pay when God showed him. And do you remember Elijah, that great prophet of God, that God answered his prayer every time he prayed? There was a price to pay. And you remember oh, David when he killed Goliath. And then all the people were singing and shouting. He has killed tens of thousands, but Saul only his thousands. And there was a price to pay. And if you want to be victorious in your Christian life, you want to be exalted and promoted and put into a place of honor and greater usefulness in your Christian life, there's a price you are going to pay. The persecutors will be after you, but you will overcome in Jesus' name. God had lifted up Daniel to a strategic place of prominence and influence. And those around him immediately began to plot how they might bring down that man from the place of honor. And he wanted to do something. What he was thinking about is, we know that he is committed to God. He is consecrated to God. He is sold out completely unto God. He is submissive unto God. He has wielded his life, his past, his present, and his future. He has wielded all that to God. He has surrendered absolutely unto the Lord. And they wanted to cut him off from that communion with God. They knew that Daniel had a God in heaven who was always praying to. And he had a king here on earth that favored him. And he said, we're going to do something. And there's no way Daniel can escape this one. Number one, either will cut him off from the communion he has with the God of heaven, or we're going to bring him to the condemnation of the king. Either of those two ways, we're going to catch him. We're going to say, if anybody prays to any God in heaven for these 30 days, he's going to be thrown into the lion's den. And then Daniel is going to be afraid. Of the lion's den. And because of that fear of man, he will not pray. And so we cut him off from God. Or maybe he will continue to pray. And then we're going to report him to the king. And we're going to make him to incur to have 
the wrath and the condemnation of the king. They just wanted him to have this favor. That's what the devil tries to do. When he knows you are born again, you are a child of God, and you are walking on the highway of righteousness and holiness. And then you have favor with God and favor with man. And the devil wants to plan and he says, I'm going to do something. Either I will, stop, I will make him stop his commitment, his consecration unto God. And then he's going to backslide. Or if he doesn't want to backslide, I'm going to cut him off from all the favors that the people of the world want to give unto him. And then he's going to lose quite a lot. But you know, Daniel, he loved his God. And serve this God, and whatever they planned or plotted, that was not going to matter to him. God had put Daniel where he wanted him to be, and he had put all those other people where he wanted them to be. Darius recognized Daniel's ability, he recognized Daniel's wisdom, recognized Daniel's ability and skill and understanding and spiritual insight. The ungodly presidents and princes and persecutors were not satisfied with their lords. And they burned with envy and jealousy and rage and bitterness against Daniel. Even though he had done them no wrong, they wanted him dead. Even though he had done nothing wrong, they wanted him dead. Can you imagine that? That's the same kind of thing that they had against the Lord Jesus Christ. Even though he had done nothing wrong, they wanted Christ dead. That's the kind of jealousy and envy that Saul had against David. Even though David had done nothing wrong, he wanted him dead. And that's what the Pharisees and the Sadducees, that's what they had against the disciples and the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ. Even though those disciples and apostles had done nothing wrong, yet they wanted them dead. And that's what happened to believers today. We are believers and children of God. And we're serving the Lord. We love the Lord. We love the word of God. And we mind our business and just do evangelism and pray unto the Lord. And we're walking the highway of obedience and righteousness of the Lord. Even though we've done nothing wrong, the people of the world and the servants of Satan, the slaves of Satan, they want us dead. But we will not die. Daniel lived. We're going to live in Jesus' name. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 19. 1 Samuel chapter 19. I'm reading from verse 5. In 1 Samuel chapter 19. And we're looking at verse 5 right there. It says in verse 5, For he did put his life in his hand, and he slew the Philistine. And the Lord wrought a great salvation for all Israel. Thou sawest it. And it's rejoice. Wherefore then wilt thou sin against the innocent blood and slay David without a cause? Without a cause. So, why will you kill David? Why do, why do you want him dead? He's done nothing wrong. He's consecrated. Everything is God. So that Israel will be delivered and he killed the Philistine Goliath. Why do you want him dead? We're looking at Psalm 119, verse 161. Psalm 119. We're looking at verse 161. Princes have persecuted me without a cause, without any reason, without doing anything wrong. Can you imagine that? That's what's still happening today. You're faithful in your place of work. 